Lord forgive me for this trap shit. Sergeant Smack making backflip. Telly Hank it with the action. With the vital speaking Spanish. Frank Matthews, how I vanish. Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut. Go BBS is on a beamer. When Fat Cat was tearing queens up. Fall off the prop and not the re up. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus. Uptown like I'm Baby Man. Just caught a touchdown. Because all of us come from the streets. I ran the streets. I did a lot of stuff, but I never had a father. And we got a lot of fathers out here who are supporting, who are giving time back. It's probably the only place in California you're going to see where you see that many fathers. My father has never seen me do anything, you know, um, but when I got out of jail. Right now, I'm in my son's life. I've, I've seen each, each one of my sons play. I take them to practice. I pick their friends up for practice. What's the most special thing about him? That he helps me with stuff. He loves me. He always be there when I need help. There's a lot of fictitious shit. Oh, no, he knocked out 32 niggas. He got the knockout record in the penitentiary in California. <coughs> and one spot. Documented, documented on camera, nigga, documented. He got to ride up for every last one of them niggas. He knocked 32 niggas out. Okay. He did that. He did that. You know, dude, like fifth degree martial arts and all that shit, but you got to remember, you talking about big you, 100, and, 100 pounds light and all that kind of shit. Okay. You know what I mean? That was, he was a different dude back then. When some of the guys were speaking about it, we were just talking about the Oh, no, he got like, a reputation you know, for that. that. That ain't nothing new out here, bro. Like, you know, I don't... Cause I ain't gonna take nothing from no nigga. That, that wasn't no new shit. Oh, okay. cause we were talking about the shit yesterday. And nigga oh, said he knocked out two crazy shit. Shit. He no. knocked one. Of, he knocked one of his own old boy's eye out of, out his whole face. Oh, oh, sorry. Damn. Yeah, for riding, <laughs> riding against, for riding, for riding with the essays against the A Trey gangster. That's his enemy in the county jail. Right. It's an Ice T save from sixties. That's what Ice T said. I know he, I know he went to Crenshaw. I know he went to Crenshaw. I know he used to be in the hood too. But you know, the older dudes, them dudes like seven, eight years older than me. I think. How the fuck old is Ice T? How old is Ice T? Ninety years older than me. He fifty nine. Damn, he nine years older than me. And he's a hundred. No, but let me tell you, I watched that little interview he did. The one thing he did tell the truth about, the nigga was getting that paper and they was hitting them licks. That's what the fuck I do know he was doing. He did have bitches. He did have bitches. Yes, sir. He didn't lie about that. Hey, this nigga said, hey, this nigga said, hey, this nigga said, everybody keeps saying, Ice T grew up in the. It's an Ice T. Ice T said on his thing he was he was he was he was from sixties. Uh, before or after he started breakdancing. Oh shit. Damn. Oh shit. That was that was Ken Mac, the historian, goddamn it. Gun no shit about every fucking body. Uh, like like Cuz had a nigga on there. Where that nigga from that hated that hated um Where where the dude that Jimmy Lavender. He's a hater. Hey, right Oh, that blue was jealous of Raymond Washington all the way. Oh, that shit, that <laughs> Raymond Washington. Yeah, man. Real, man. This dude was hating on Raymond Washington so bad. Yeah. Oh, man, this dude hating on Raymond Washington so bad. Bruce be hating on Raymond Washington. What's Bruce? It's awesome. It's awesome. Bruce. Oh, for real? Yeah, he's talking about Bruce. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bruce. Yeah, yeah. 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 Bruce. Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. Bruce. Yeah. 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 He told me, he said, I see he came over my shop, I gave him some money, he said, yeah, I'm up to a million, you, I'm up to me. I went viral on Nipsey shit, and I went viral on somebody else, he said. Every day I catch him on Snapchat, he be like live on radio station, six so. Uh, and he go right when the troops come through. And he go through. Yeah, if they come through. If they come through. That nigga said, that nigga said, he said, he said, he said, he said, so quick. Yeah. And I, and I didn't see him because I tell people that. I see him with him. Big Cubone. He's banging on whatever. I see him like. I see Cubone. Hey, when we gonna get you on the on the uh, on the uh, on the thing, Cubone? Flaked on me, cause I never told you. Can't be. Nah, Cubone flaked. 
Yeah, Cubone Flake, but it's all good. It used to be five dudes for that. We do six or so wherever we go. What? Cubone? My first time getting shot was in Cubone in 1981. Yeah, I got my first time. My first time ever getting shot. 1981. In the shoulder. 81 or 82? I could be wrong. It was 81 or 82. I just came to I ain't even go to the hospital either. I was too scared. Mom's find out. <laughs> I was, I was, I was most scared of bombs. Out, I was, yeah, I was most scared of bombs after I got shot. Did anybody? <laughs> I ain't going to the hospital. It's like take, take me to the home girl house. She, she got her mama a nurse. <laughs> I take that shot before I go to mom. I never went to the hospital. Took that shit like a champ. He said, as soon as he gets to back to LA. Hey, uh, 80s is extra. 80s is extra. Yeah. Was, you know what the 80s was? The 80s, no, yeah, we get that. Wasn't no cameras. And every time you seen a nigga that you didn't like, you had, you had to flight out the car right there and meet him. There wasn't no. No. Now we can't kill nobody. We got to go the camera because we don't care. We can't do nothing. I mean, niggas, niggas was like, man, I ain't letting my mama ride with me. You had certain cars you couldn't ride. Your, niggas weren't riding their kids in their cars. If you, if you was driving that car too much, you weren't riding nobody in that car. Cause not nobody you love. Oh, was going to be at your shit. Well, thank you. My mama did it. We bust out every car she had. I never, I never shot at anybody. <laughs> for the I did. <laughs> you know, I was the lawyer for the hood. I, I got all the homies off. I was the lawyer. That's how. That's how I, my name became famous because I would, you know, help the homies. You know. Yo, yo, we back. It's your boy Pop a lot. Mob, mob, mob. We on our way to Los Angeles with it. Sunny California. Meet us in Crenshaw. Matter of fact, don't meet us unless you know somebody. And don't tell them you know me. A whole lot of neighborhood shit about to go on. So today we on one. We covering none other than the infamous Eugene Big U Hentley. Now we really couldn't run a channel or a series called Mob Ties without covering guys like Big U. And I'm going to do my best to try to break down his history and show why he's such an important person, not only in the city of Los Angeles and definitely in the Crenshaw area, but in the music business and worldwide. Though affiliation has been denied, Big U has been described by gang experts in California as a leader, if not the top man in the rolling 60s, which they consider a heavily armed crip gang based in South Central Los Angeles. Now, if we're talking about territory, they're going to say that the Rolling 60s stretches from Slauson Avenue to Florence Avenue, and that's going to be between Western Avenue and around Crenshaw Boulevard. Now, they're definitely going to be one of the more well-known and probably the most infamous, and some people would say they're the most feared black gang in the Hyde Park Crenshaw region of Los Angeles. Now, the Rolling 60s have a really, really deep history, and they say they range from around 6,000 to 8,000 members in California. Now, they're going to have a long-standing beef with the h Trey Gangster Crips, who they were close allies with at one time. But for reasons unknown, they began to go back and forth. And the rivalry between them two was actually responsible for being the first Crip on Crip rivalry in the history of los angeles according to some media outlets now some of the more notable members of the 60s is going to be everybody knows nipsey hustle going to be little fee going to be cj mack and also corrupt and in some interviews big u goes into detail about how he first met corrupt back in 1990 and that was almost his introduction to the music business even though he was entrenched in the streets at that time. He would talk about a story of how he was kicked out of 
L.A. in 1982 and he was forced to go live with his father in some kind of program that they had. And he would return back to L.A. in 1984. And he said crack was full on display at that time. He would come back and he would see a block of his homies. They would have foreign cars. Everybody had thousands. And he pretty much stated that he would get in how he fit in at that point. Now, prior to that, by all accounts, he had been making a name for himself on the streets. He was trained in martial arts and he came from a large family and he explained that that was one of the protocols with his family. And he would explain how martial arts would have a big impact on his life, citing things like discipline. And he said almost a lot of stuff that happened, happened at the martial arts studio. So. He was definitely a terror in the streets and it's still folklore and stories about things that he did, people he knocked out. So he was definitely a hitter and a fighter for the 60s because early on in the gang times, it in the 90s, I want to say a transition, definitely the 80s um, with the drugs. But early on in the gangs, you definitely had to be a fighter. And by all accounts, he was one of the top fighters in the city. Now, with the evolution of drugs and it funding the gang, because he would talk about how they went from pistols to automatic weapons. Now, during the course of this arms race, Big U would find himself in a situation where he would be facing the longest time of his life behind bars in 1991. When him and a friend, a guy by the name of Eddie Wagner, attempted to rob an undercover police officer, allegedly. And they gonna say that he was trying to relieve the officer of 33 pounds of cocaine. Big U would go on to explain that what they would do was they would target and set up these deals. And when the suspected drug dealers would pull up, they would pretty much just take the stash from the drug dealer. And in the course of this, he would end up being sentenced to 23 years he would end up doing 14 years so he would be released in 2004 and after his release if you didn't know who he was or if you was not familiar with him you would become very very familiar with him because he would make statements like if he was not home there would not be no death row and he would say that emphatically and for some reason i believe him but looking at it it probably just wasn't his time because now he's out having motion making plays. I see that he's in the real estate game. He brought a documentary to FX, Hip Hop Uncovered, that a lot of people talked about, had Bimmy, Deb, Anthony, Haitian Jack. Y'all make sure y'all check that out if y'all didn't. But yeah, he's definitely a somebody out here and somebody I felt like we need to cover on Mob Ties and kind of delve a little bit more and tell the people exactly who he is or why he's so important. Y'all know what it is with me. Y'all make sure y'all follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. Y'all hit the subscribe right under this video so y'all know when this real trill spill shit is dropping. Y'all make sure y'all get in the comment box below. And y'all let me know what cities we haven't been to, who we haven't covered, what gangsters we need to discuss. And y'all tap in with me however y'all see fit. Tweet me, text me, call me, CC me, email me, stop me in the streets. However y'all want to do it, I'm here for all that shit. It's your boy Pop a lot. Mob, mob, mob.